Review copy provided by Nintendo. Thanks, Nintendo! Hello, my classic formula friends, Arlo here, and today we're reviewing... The Link's Awakening Remake. It's a modernization of a beloved Game Boy classic, and the question we must ask ourselves is... Does it play like a dream, or is it an absolute nightmare? Literally, easiest one of those I've ever had to come up with. It was a no-brainer. Anyway, whoosh! This was the hardest review I've ever had to write. Okay, no, this was the hardest review I've ever had to write, but this one is pretty up there. And no, I don't mean I'm criticizing something I wanted to love, so it was hard. No, I just mean it was difficult. There are just so many factors to consider here, thanks in no small part to the fact that I am reviewing a remake. Do I judge the game completely on its own merits? Do I instead leave that part alone and only judge how good of a remake it is? And what even makes a good remake? Is it accuracy, or should a remake expand upon the original? It feels like it's different for every game, and sometimes even I don't know what I prefer. Then even beyond that conundrum, I'm extremely torn on this game. Don't get me wrong, it's Link's Awakening, spoiler alert, it's great fun, it's a great game. But there are so many little things that I love, or I really don't love, or I somehow kinda love and don't love at the same time. It was, it was a very tumultuous experience. And you know what? I know this is the review equivalent of a self-destruct, but I will not be giving it a score. I'm sorry, I just can't. I can't come to one solid decision about the game in this case. I tried to, but it just felt like I was arbitrarily picking a number. So instead, I'm just gonna tell you what I like and what I don't like, and you'll just have to listen to me struggle with all the <laughs> conflicted feelings. I'm sorry if that's a deal breaker for you or something. First things first though, if you haven't played Link's Awakening, I can tell you that it is one of Link's most unusual adventures. After the events of Link to the Past and the Oracle games, Link is sailing across the ocean going somewhere or other, when a storm hits and his ship is destroyed. He washes up on Koholint Island, and a friendly owl informs him that there's a giant windfish sleeping in the giant egg on top of the mountain. Nightmares are keeping it asleep, and Link's gotta track down eight magical instruments so he can use them to play the Ballad of the Windfish and wake the thing up. There's no Princess Zelda here, no Ganon, no Hyrule, no Triforce, and as we've all seen with other titles like Majora's Mask, breaking free from the traditional Zelda trappings allows the team to really stretch their creative muscles. Link's Awakening is weird. It's delightfully surreal. Most notably, half the people on Koholint Island are talking animals for some reason, and there are traditional Mario baddies like Goombas and Cheep Cheeps and stuff all over the place. Considering this was a Game Boy game, the story and overall concept are surprisingly thought-provoking, and despite its colorful nature, there are some very bittersweet moments to observe if you know where to look for them. Gameplay and design-wise, Link's Awakening is still a mighty, mighty fine example of top-down Zelda to this day. 26 years ago, the series was still relatively young, and this game was developed for the little old Game Boy very soon after gracing the, at the time, vastly more powerful Super NES. But you'd barely know it from playing the remake, where many other series at the time saw Game Boy releases that were vastly overshadowed by their console counterparts, Link's Awakening holds up better than anyone could possibly expect. The world is fairly small, you could probably run from one end to the other in a minute or two if you had a straight path, but it doesn't feel small at all because it's incredibly dense. There's no wasted space anywhere, every square houses something important or some kind of secret. The eight full dungeons and countless caves to explore make the world feel bigger still. And where the Switch's other Zelda game gave us an open-air style of gameplay, Link's Awakening is the exact opposite. Your progression is based purely on the items you get, and you unlock pieces of the world incrementally as you adventure through it. The whole thing is one big beautiful puzzle crafted with utmost care, and it achieves that rare, perfect adventure game balance. You're always hitting dead ends when you don't have the right tool, but you're also constantly finding secrets and other items. Every time you get a new major progression item, new secrets open up all over the world. World. Backtracking is rarely a chore because there's always something to do, and this achieves two things. Making you feel like you're constantly rewarded, and making the absolute most out of a relatively small geographic game space without the experience feeling padded. If there's one slight frustration that's always come up when I play Link's Awakening, it's that there's usually one single place you need to go or one thing you need to do to progress, and I often find myself scratching my head about it and running around in circles. And actually, I'm very surprised Nintendo didn't add in a more traditional 
hint system beyond the vague one already in place. Sometimes it can come down to entering a single staircase in one specific cave up on the mountain that you thought you'd already entered or you couldn't get through earlier, but now you've got the item for it, but you just didn't remember. It's not even necessarily a bad thing that the game doesn't hold your hand. It really just requires good memorization and a whole lot of exploration. Just something to note more than anything. The game's dungeons are terrific. They just might have the best difficulty curve of any Zelda. The difficulty ramps up so subtly and smoothly, starting you with very basic layouts and puzzles and finishing off the experience with some sprawling head scratchers. The bosses are one element that I'm a bit torn on. On the one hand, I feel like too many of them are overly simplistic in design and a little uninspired. Even late in the game, you're running into bosses with one very obvious attack pattern and weakness and taking them out in mere moments. On the other hand though, I love that there are just a ton of them all over the place, inside dungeons and out. You just never know when you're gonna hit one and even when they are too simple or easy, they're all fun and add a lot of variety to the gameplay to help break up the run and chop combat you get with basic enemies. So we know that the game is great, but how about the remake? Well, in my eyes, the best thing it brings to the table are the quality of life improvements. In the original, you had A and B, and that was it. You had to switch items constantly, whipping out the power bracelet if you wanted to pick anything up, and the Pegasus boots if you wanted to run. If you wanted to use two items at once, you couldn't have your sword out at all. Because of this, I never even used my shield unless I absolutely had to to beat a specific enemy or something. But here, on top of your two equip buttons, you've got your sword permanently mapped to the B button, a general grab mapped to A, your shield mapped to R or ZR, and the Pegasus boots mapped to L or ZL. So right there, the game is already a lot more convenient to play. However, it can still be a bit of a hassle, and I feel like they could have taken it a step further. They could have made ZR shield and R jump with Rock's feather, seeing as that's something I always want equipped. L and ZL, same thing. It's wasted real estate putting one thing on two buttons. Worst of all though, they completely ignored the D-pad. You can't even move with it. Outside of menus, it does nothing. Why not give us something like the weapon wheel in Breath of the Wild? Or maybe you can map different XY combinations to the different directions? Nintendo not utilizing all the buttons on their controllers is a constant frustration. Other improvements and new features added to the remake. The map is now easier to use with a zoom feature, which helps you get a real feel for an area without having to look at it up close every time. You can also place pins, which is something that literally every game with a map ever should have. There are more warp spots, which obviously cuts down drastically on unneeded traffic travel time. The game contains way more heart pieces and secret seashells to collect, which means a lot more to do and more rewards to earn. They also added some bottles to find so you can catch fairies, which of course brings it in line with most other Zeldas. While the basic combat is almost identical, they did add one surprising little thing. Before, in order to hit an enemy that was holding a sword and a shield, you just had to come at them from the right angle. But now you can hold up your shield and wait for them to hit it and get knocked back so you can close in with a strike. It's a very small detail, but it does make combat a smidge more engaging, so I like it. A somewhat larger change, the Claw Machine game has been expanded upon dramatically with much more to collect, including little Mario batty figurines that you can display in the villagers' houses. The game is now pretty janky and stuff will slip out of the claw even when you're sure you've got it, but if you ask me, that just makes it all the more enjoyable. It was something I never really paid much attention to in the original once I got the story item I needed, but now it's become a nice little diversion to have some silly fun with. The largest functional change is, without a doubt, the addition of Dompei's little dungeon creator. While the overworld now scrolls naturally from area to area, the dungeons are still split up into tiles. You can collect these tiles and use them to put together your own dungeons, and big surprise, I'm torn on this. This is of course a far cry from a true Zelda maker. Your options are very limited, and obviously you can't attain the same kind of progression and total cohesion you get with a real dungeon. It's really just a series of challenge rooms, most of which aren't super challenging on their own. You can't even share your creations online, so there's no way to challenge people from all over to beat your extra tricky dungeon and no massive list of dungeons to tackle when you're bored. On the positive side though, it is kind of fun to mess around with, and it gives you a chance to fight through the game's bosses whenever you want, which is great when you're trying to collect footage for a review. Even if you can't share online, you can store dungeons to your Zelda amiibo and share with friends. It doesn't live up to what it could be, but in the end, it's something extra to do, which I am thankful for. Dompei gives you a series of tutorial challenges, and honestly, they're kind of fun to do on their own. They're kind of like puzzles. You gotta put all the right kinds of rooms in all the right places. Of course, when you're talking about a remake, no change will ever feel as substantial as the visual assets, and here the entire thing has been rebuilt in 3D. 
I already went into pretty great detail regarding my thoughts on the game's art style in my video, Link's Awakening, Remakes, Art Styles, and Opinions, so forgive me for reiterating some of them here. Credit where credit is due, this game does look really nice. It's colorful, it's lively, the characters have all been fully animated, and some of the texture work and lighting give it a sort of toy-like realism. But some visual choices do not look great to me. I was a fan of the depth of field effect when I first saw the reveal trailer, but in action, it is not pleasant at all. It just makes for a large percentage of the screen that you can't see clearly. And they made Link only run in eight directions, which felt really bad at first, though I can see the benefit and I did eventually get used to it for the most part. The problem is, they didn't animate him turning smoothly. He just sort of jerks from position to position and it looks awful. I really, really hate how it looks, even after spending many hours with the game. It would be one thing if the whole game was going for the same sort of jerky stop motion style, but it's not. The rest of the time, it's smooth. Or at least, it's supposed to be smooth, which leads me to one of the game's biggest problems. The frame rate dips and judders way too often for a first party Nintendo game. Mainly this happens when you move from one area of the map to another, and this happens constantly. It's extremely unpleasant sometimes, and it would have been better if they just locked the game at 30 FPS instead of trying to make this ultra smooth experience and failing all the time. It's the inconsistency that's worse than anything. If there's something I had a problem with since the beginning though, it is the overall style, though I will say now that instead of just being against it, I am mostly against it but also a little bit torn. Link's Awakening is a weird and silly game, so in a way, the visual style fits. But it's also got some surreal and somber elements, which makes me feel like something moodier would have worked better. The opening animation is so beautiful and evocative that making everything cutesy with creepy little button eyes seems like a huge waste. And while it impresses on a technical level, the plasticky sheen on everything, including things that just shouldn't look that way, like trees, makes little sense. If they were going for a full toy style, I still wouldn't think it fit the tone of the game, but at least it would be more cohesive. But this halfway toy thing is just weird to me. Is it a toy? Is it plastic? Or is it clay? Or is it real? I don't really know. Like I said earlier, it's hard to say what a remake should and shouldn't be, and it probably depends on each individual game. But my major problem with Link's Awakening is that it plays things too safe, and sacrifices a lot for the sake of accuracy. Much like Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, it's a square for square remake when it absolutely just does not need to be. When they made the original, they used stubby little button-eyed sprites because that was all they could manage with the hardware and on such a small screen. When they made the DX version a few years later and added in the ability to collect pictures from certain scenarios, what did they do? They made the pictures detailed and expressive. I imagine that that was probably how they wished the game could have looked. But the remake doesn't even attempt to use that more expressive style. Instead, it gives us a style that's basically a 3D version of stubby little button-eyed sprites. I feel like a good remake should explore the idea of how a game might have looked if the technology had permitted at the time. If the original team could have made Link's Awakening look however they wanted while still making it a top-down Zelda, what would they have done? This was the perfect opportunity to explore that, but the opportunity was squandered to attain that accuracy. The result looks good in its own sort of way. It's colorful, it's pleasant, all that good stuff. But there's also an underlying blandness to it, this feeling that it could have been so much more, and that a game as great as Link's Awakening absolutely deserves as much. Okay, like, in the original game, they had limited assets, so using their basic wall texture to make a little box and putting a hole texture in the middle of it? That was an appropriate decoration at the time. But here, recreated? Sorry if this is harsh, but it just looks dumb. They couldn't have put some sort of real decoration there? Some fun little flourish? In so many cases, the game uses the same visual shortcuts the original did when it could easily do something better. Like the grass. Why does it still have to be in perfect geometric little squares? They couldn't have at least rounded out the edges or something to make it look more natural? It looks ridiculous in a 3D game. Or take the desert area. The original devs thought, you know what would be cool? If there were skeletons in the sand. So they did that. But then the devs of the remake went, you know what would be cool? If the skeletons were the same repeating texture in the same places. And they did that. They could have taken the opportunity to strew skeletons and bones around in a more natural, realistic way. But nope, that's not how the original game was. So that's not how it is on Nintendo's HD system capable of running games that look like Breath of the Wild. It goes a little further than the art style too. There are all these little things that just didn't need to stay the same. Why can't I charge diagonally with the Pegasus boots? 
I don't know, because you couldn't in the original? Why does the game have to stop everything and give me a little message every single time I collect a piece of power or a guardian acorn? They're all over the place. It happens constantly. I don't know, because that's what the original game did. The end result of all the unnecessary sameness is a game that doesn't do nearly enough to justify its hefty price tag. People who criticize the price usually call Link's Awakening out for being short and being old, but really, it's not that short. Like I said, the world is incredibly dense, especially if you're the type who likes to collect stuff, there's a decently hefty experience here. Plus, if you're anything like me, you'll spend a fair amount of time running back and forth looking for the next thing you're supposed to do. And even though it's old, the design is still phenomenal. The dungeons are great, the item progression is great, and the characters are all charming as heck. For me at least, that insistence on accuracy and sameness is the main problem. It's the art style adapted from 8-bit sprites instead of from the concept originally behind those sprites. If they had done something truly unique and beautiful with the game, it would easily be worth the price. But this experience is nearly identical to the original, and you can still get that on the 3DS eShop for 5 bucks. Five bucks to have almost exactly as much fun. I will admit though, if there is one thing that bumps the value of this game up a fair amount, it's the fact that you can play it in hero mode right out of the gate. As usual, this doubles the amount of damage you take and removes all recovery hearts from the game, requiring that you only use fairies and the like. This makes the game a lot more challenging, especially in the early stages when you've only got a few hearts, and of course it makes heart pieces and heart containers a whole lot more valuable. I'll bet to the right person, this alone would make the game worth buying, regardless of the price. Am I one of those people? I have no idea! Maybe I am today, and maybe I won't be tomorrow. Again, I just can't seem to come to any one conclusion about the game, or whether it's maybe worth the price after all, or if it's a good remake, or what. I obviously do have reservations about the art style, and I wish they'd done something more with it, but sometimes I look at it and I go, yeah. But it still looks nice, <laughs> and I think maybe it fits the colorful tone after all. When the core game is as good as it is, can I judge it harshly based on the art style I wish it had when I admit that it's still good the way it is? Is it fair to judge a remake for not being different enough from the original? Or is this the perfect remake? It's got some technical problems, but they're not huge technical problems, so do they bring down the experience enough to count against it? I just don't know. Which is exactly why I'm not giving it a score. The way I feel about the game is the things that I said, and that's that, I guess. If there's one thing that I am certain about, it's that the original Link's Awakening is a ton of fun, and like that game, this remake is also a ton of fun. So, there you go. Them's my feelings. Take them, take them or leave them. What about you? Are you a cold, cynical old fogey who sees this remake as an abomination? Or perhaps a spry youngling who never even played the original and sees nothing here but a great game? Or maybe you never liked Link's Awakening in the first place? Whatever the case, let me know down in the comments, and if you would, please join me in crossing my fingers for Oracle remakes.